everyone, it's Sophie from Build Your Jungle and today we're doing something a little bit different. I have done multiple houseplant hauls on this channel and such, but if you have been following my videos, you may know that I, this year, I've not been buying houseplants really. I think I gave myself a limit of 10. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about the buying habits of someone other than me who's into completely different styles of houseplants to me, and it's my housemate, Harriet. You may or may not know that I have two housemates. I have Harriet and I have Aaron, and Aaron's kind of into his bonsais and outdoor stuff and that kind of thing and Harriet for the longest time has had no interest in plants. I've tried to show her plants many times. She says they all look the same. She's just never really been interested in it. She's been known to have bought plants in the past, but she says that she more views them as a decoration and then she asked me to look after them for it. <laughs> And we've lived together since 2017. It's a very long time. We're trying to beat the Mark and Joe's record. If you watch Peep Show, generally, if I had to describe her attitude towards plants before, it was very much an irritation with them. And I feel like that was my fault. It was mostly my fault for leaving soil all over the bathroom, which people do not like. But recently she had the sudden spark of interest in plants and I could just see it happening like it happened in myself. All of these plants that I'm about to haul that she got were all bought in the last month. And I think what's really just great to watch is how it gets progressively more intense. Like you can see it starts as like a slight interest to full blown, yes, I am now a plant person mode. And I'd like to think that this was the work of me having shoved many leaves into her face going, look at this, but I don't think I can take credit. I actually think it was the after effects of us all as a household watching Hack My Home, which if you've seen that on Netflix, it's a very entertaining show, but it certainly made us all think about the house more. And I feel like that is what got her looking at stuff. The first two plants are from Ikea and then everything else was from Plants for All Seasons, which I. I'd actually not used before but Jules had recommended them to me so when Harriet was asking me where she should look for plants I thought that it would be a good wreck. So it's been a positive first handful of experiences with plants for all seasons. Some of these plants are upstairs and I will be bringing and some of them I will be doing with b-roll because they're in the downstairs vicinity. So at first I think she'd been looking on Pinterest a bit and she got that Ikea mini greenhouse that are really cute a lot of us have them and that lives in the kitchen now and obviously if you're gonna get a greenhouse you gotta get some plants so she got two little 6cm plants and the first one was a parlor palm and then there was also a Maranta Lucanera fascinator which is the Maranta with the red veins. The first one doesn't surprise me because Harriet when she's shown some interest in plants in the past it's been in alocasia and in palms anything that looks kind of tropical and what's interesting about this is Yes, it's a palm, but it's much more compact than other palms. It stays at a smaller size. It's native to Guatemala and Mexico, and it's one of three species of palm that is harvested for use in floral arrangements. For some people, this is actually like their full-time job, is harvesting the fronds of these plants and selling them. Imports from this alone raise, I think, over a million dollars for Guatemala annually. So it's a lot of money. It's important to the economy. Obviously, when we're talking about it as a trade like this, there are sustainable harvesting methods and then there are non-unsustainable uh, harvesting methods which contribute to deforestation and this plant uh, being at risk of endangerment. But thankfully, the Rainforest Alliance and different charities and stuff have conservation programs in place for this plant. Little planty fact side note there. I feel like a lot of us know the Kenty palm, which is like the huge big statement, very like Hollywood hotel vibes kind of palm. And they're very poisonous to dogs, but the parlor palms definitely a very popular choice. When I worked in horticulture, like we used to sell so many uh, of this plant. And I don't know if anyone will remember, but ages ago, I used to have a very small rooted clipping and it was of an albo variegated, just randomly mutated variegated version of a parlor palm. And it did not survive. It was very much before 
I had an understanding of providing humidity for plants, which brings me on to my next point, which is that this plant needs elevated humidity. It can tend to get crisping tips of the leaves. So far, she's done pretty well with this one. It's had a new leaf coming already, but I have noticed there's been some crisping, but I think that she's going to be moving the greenhouse up to her bedroom, which would probably be more suitable in terms of light. Uh, because there is a chance that that crisping could have been from some direct sun in our spontaneous British climate and I've just missed it because that plant's not a fan of direct sun. But anyway, it was a good first plant to buy really. Not too difficult. She's not a fan of succulents so she was definitely going to pick something that was, you know, doable but not easy as a succulent because it's just not her thing. Then the other plants, the Maranta, that's one that really got me when I was first into plants as well. This is all that I have left of mine right now. I decided to propagate it all because it was just, as this one is downstairs, one rooted vine. Luckily though, I've noticed that Harriet's actually has a new caterpillar coming up from the soil, so I'm hoping she's gonna get two vines. And then I was gonna secretly give her some of mine to make it fuller for her when I next do a repotting. These roots so easily in water so it's quite easy to make a fuller pot and Harriet's definitely attracted to like the patterned leaves of Calathea and Maranta but Maranta is a much more beginner friendly choice because it doesn't freak out when it's not got high humidity, it doesn't crisp up as easily, it's not as sensitive to tap water and I generally feel like plants that need to be moist consistently like Spathobilum and Maranta are quite good for beginners a lot because a lot of us tend to overwater rather than underwater when we first get plants and it's a plant that's not really hopefully going to be affected by that. Another thing I think she finds really cool about this plant and again it's giving me nostalgia because I also found this really cool is that Maranta leaves are really responsive to light throughout the day and they always are changing position and it's just part of the I think it's pronounced circadian rhythm that all living things encounter but it's very interesting and it's kind of like how my oxalis which is this plant and I'll put in a clip of this so that I can show you what I mean in the daytime the little I always say butterfly <laughs> leaves uh, they open and at night time they close in response to the light and it's very interesting it's the same as that and she was enjoying watching those grow and I think then the next week she was having I kept seeing her looking on her phone at all the plants and she asked me what plant can I get that is hard to unalive and I said the Aspidistra aliator because, or Eli I can't pronounce it, Aspidistra aliator, aletia, cast iron plant anyway, because it's a big foliage plant, it was a statement plant, she wanted it for a bedroom which has a lot lower light and it's generally, it gets its name and it's regarded as being the cast iron plant because it's one of the easiest, most low maintenance plants to look after. It's one that people historically have loved for that, I won't say value, it's characteristic, for the characteristic of being easy care. And it's a beautiful plant as you would expect from an Aspidistra. It's looking great and it just adds that instant kind of structural, structural, sculptural, um, silhouette to a room which is what she was kind of wanting but I feel like she wanted something bigger she kept saying it's nice but I wish it was bigger which is what happens later on in this haul <laughs> but with this plant it really is so easy it stands up to neglect it can deal with our very terrible fluctuating temperatures it can deal with frost uh, and it can deal with people that forget to open the blinds a lot so I just thought it was a good choice and she seems to be quite liking it. And then she got me this and it was a begonia escargot and I've wanted this begonia for ages and I've been on a big begonia kick for a while now and I thought it was so sweet that she didn't just only think of what plants she wanted. She got me this little begonia and I was having a bit of a down time as well with everything with health wise and stuff and it was just really sweet of her and the petioles are like uh, really fuzzy and pink which is something that's really interesting that I didn't realize about this plant because all of the focus is always on 
the leaves. Escargot is snail in French and it's called that because of the way that it spirals like that. It looks kind of similar to a snail shell and they've got these lovely pinky borders and pinky veins underneath on the backs as well and I've repotted that into an aeroid pot. Uh, there was a tiny rip and I have to say like all the plants from Plants for All Seasons they've been like really good condition and there's been this plant and one other plant that had a little rip on them but it's really not a big deal because once begonias get going it's like constantly popping out new leaves. I love silvery plants so I feel like it was kind of obvious that this would be on my wish list. But yeah that was a side note there are three side Three side notes? Yeah, there are three side notes because Harriet was really sweet and bought me three plants. So that's been in the prop box at the moment because we know begonias, they love the humidity. And getting back to Harriet, so she then wanted some smaller plants and I think it's because she's got a big windowsill. Their room is bigger than mine and it's like a really big long windowsill and I think she just wanted some cute little plants that also because Milo can kind of get up there because there's like a, I can never say this word, it's like a buffet or a buffet. And then I can, I give up and then I just call it a poof. Um, a stool box storage thing anyway, but he can jump up on that. And then in essentially he could get onto the windowsill if he wanted to. So she said, which ones are okay for pets? So I was saying, you know, the whole spiel of the, really if a dog ate like a large amount of any plant, it wouldn't be feeling top notch, but the Calathea and Peperomia and stuff like that were a safe, safe, non-toxic bet. So she got some little Calatheas, uh, even though I warned that she'd have to stay on top of the watering. But because I said that, I did notice that she'd watered them unprompted for me. And I was like, I felt like a proud mentor. And I was like, oh my God. She's watered a plant on her own. She's listened about the plant. It was really cute. So she got two species of Calathea. And they were both ones I haven't had actually, because. I've got a Maconyana, a Medallion, Arbifolia. I think that's all I've got at the moment. This was my favourite one that she got. I think it's really lovely. Um, and it's already been growing well. It's got a new leaf on the way there. And I think it's given her uh, this big leaf as well. So she's done well with that. She's done what most people fail to do when they get Calathias and they let them dry out too much and they go crispy. Uh, but this one is looking really good. And I'm thinking that because it's like an all green one like the Arbifolia, maybe it'll be a bit more hardy to crisping, which would be great for her because it's not as humid in her room as it is in mine. And this is Calathea, it says Freddle uh, on the label, it says Calathea Freddle, uh, but it's Freddy, it's definitely a, a typo, but it's Calathea Freddy. And then, I th is this Lancifolia? Yeah, this is Calathea Lancifolia. There's clearly just an issue uh, with the letter I on the label printer because they put Lancelofolia on this as well and it's a similar vibe but it's always like if Macanyana uh, had elongated leaves that's kind of like what this one's like and it's got the red nice backs again that are more of the traditional Calathea so they're adorable and she wants to get some little pots to put them in because her room is very much more nice sophisticated good interior design whereas my room's very much like jungle backyard sale and then still as part of this order she got an alocasia and I knew that she would get an alocasia at some point because she very much loves the alocasias uh, and it was alocasia Jacqueline and I was a bit concerned that this would be living uh, on that windowsill but not not in like a cloche or something and it is struggling like it came with what looked to be like a little bit of pest damage because the leaf had completely lost its pigment at the top on this lobe here as if it had had the ribs but it's a shame because it's a cute little plant and they're really hairy and the jacklings look really cool when they're bigger and I know that she really wanted this one but also now it looks like it's got basal rot on this petiole and that leaves falling off and then it's got this crisping here and she's really not had this one very long at all and I'm finding it difficult because I want to give her the best advice possible to keep this plant 
alive, but I'm not the alocasia master. And when things are really small, like plants are really small and juvenile, they're a lot more sensitive to stuff like a lack of humidity or harsh radiators and things like that. And the thing is, because if this was like a philodendron or whatever, and I'm feeling this soil right now, I'd be like, yeah, it needs to be watered. But because this is like rotted, I'm just a bit like, I don't know. I'm not sure. And then I think this, she also got this for me in the same order, I think. So this was also from Plants for All Seasons. And it was really cute. She picked this without knowing uh, if I'd like it. And um, it was very me because it's a philodendron. I love philodendrons. And it's alba variegated and I love variegated plants. And it's the philodendron white wizard. They're kind of related or the cousin kind of, if you will, because they look related uh, of Philodendron White Princess and Philodendron White Knight. I feel like Jules gave me some White Knight and it's in one of my pop jars. But these plants uh, are quite similar, but the difference is that on White Princess, the petioles have pink and on White Wizard, uh, there is no pink. And then for White Knight, it looks like White Wizard, but with much wider shaped leaves that aren't as long as well. Oh, I just kicked a pop box. And this one, already has a new leaf. I haven't repotted things, anything yet or whatever. I sprayed things. Well, actually I couldn't find my spray, but also I poured water on things and then wiped it instead of spraying things. When I do repot it, I'm going to be potting it in my chunky Aroid mix. It's probably ready to go up a pot size. Yeah, I can see some baby roots. But honestly, like how cute is my best friend? She's so cute. Okay, so after that, she then placed another order. This was about a week later and I knew what it was. I knew it was for a snake plant, but I didn't know what kind or how big it was gonna be or whatever. Uh, but in the order, before I get on about the snake plant, uh, Harriet is an absolute angel face and she'd literally noticed me like pining after this plant uh, for ages and she bought it for me. And I thought it was just the sweetest most thoughtful thing in the entire world, right? And it's Alocasia Platinum. I love it so much. It's got like a leathery texture and just these really cool leaves. And I was scared to buy it because as I've said many times before, I haven't been the best with Alocasia in the past. So I've been absolutely babying this and it's got a new leaf and it's beautiful. I just love it. I feel like it goes with my outfit right now. But it's like a silvery, limey green. Uh, and I got it with my anthuriums, which are on a lower kind of filtered light shelf because I just didn't want to scorch the leaves until I'm like fully re-educate myself on what the alocasia require for me to be happy. But I love this plant. I instantly chucked it in this pot because I was like, no plant that is this beautiful shall be without a nice pot in my collection. And this is just like an instant favourite and I'll be so gutted if I unalive this. So again, please leave me all your allocation tips. It would be very, very helpful. And I've not repotted it yet. This actually, I was thinking this was the most amount of perlite I've ever seen in a nursery mix because usually it's just straight up qua. So I felt okay once I've treated this about leaving it in this mix for now until I kind of think about what would be best for it because I'm thinking my Aeroid mix will be too chunky for you. But yeah, I could just stare at this, for this forever. So nice. So anyway, that was for me and she gave it to me, but the snake plant guy is right. So this box comes and the guy, it must have been so heavy because the guy that was delivering it came to the door to check that I was in before he brought the parcel and then looked very, very annoyed at me when I told him that I couldn't lift stuff right now and asked him to lift it into the house for me. But he did do it. It wasn't my normal post person. They are very nice. And the box was like, this but because I used to work at like a plant business I know that you know they don't get boxes for every size it's like Amazon so I just thought it's not going to be as tall as the box like but it was pretty close like it was quite large there were handles holes on the box and I could see the top of one of the leaves in the thing I thought oh my goodness does she realize it's this big and again, when you pack up plants, like they're often, the leaves are kind of 
pushed up a bit like this to fit into the box. And then when you undo the box, it's like, bam. And what just cracked me up and was so funny was she was so excited about it. For the few days before it, when she was at work, she kept being like, Sophie, has it arrived yet? Has the snake plant arrived yet? And then it arrived. And I resisted the urge to open and peek. And then she got back. I wanted to see how excited she was because I love people's plant excitement when they ripping stuff open. And she was like, I'm not going to be that excited. But then she started ripping the box horizontally in strips to open it, which I thought was hilarious. It was a mixture of this box is really hard to open and I'm so excited I'm just going to tear into it like this. It was very funny. But what I'm getting around to saying in the absolute longest way possible is that I have seen some big snake plants, right? But this is the biggest snake plant that in a pot, like an indoor house plant snake plant, that I have ever seen in my life. Not only is it tall, it's just like hench. It's so thick. There are so many plants in there, it's massive. We actually had a pot that we thought it was going to go in, but it was so much bigger than we thought that it was. Um, and I'm just gonna have to show you it in situ because there is no way on this earth that I can lift that. Like it's so heavy, it's so heavy. And it's really nice to have some big, big specimen plants in the house. I think it really elevates the house as a whole. And I think that this is one that would work for many people. And this plant, I thought it was going to be a lot more expensive than she told me it was. I think she said that she spent about a hundred pounds on it. And to me, that is quite a good price for a huge plant like that, that is like the size and weight of a nine-year-old child. Like they're usually very, very expensive because Sansevieria or Dracaena, because some of them have been reclassified as Dracaena, they grow very slowly. They take their sweet time. So people charge a lot for them. It's the same reason why some Hoyas are so expensive because they take their sweet time as well. So this species of this is Sansevieria Laurentii. And I think it might be Sansevieria trifasciata Laurentii, but I'll just put it on screen just to be sure. And finally, when you think that someone can't peek into their plant lovingness more than that, they go and place another order. And now um, Harriet's bought a big multi-pack of plants, but I can't show you it yet because it's not arrived. But just for reference, it's this from Plants for All Seasons with the mix, which I think it's a lot better when people are first getting into plants, you know, and stuff like to get a better value bundle for stuff like that. Obviously the con is that you don't know what you're gonna get until you get it or what they're gonna have in stock, but I think that it's a good idea and that seems like quite a fair price bundle compared to other websites. Anyway, I feel like I've been an accidental advert for Plants for All Seasons today, uh, but this was not sponsored in any way. It was just my friend Jules recommended them to me. They gave us some good plants. We were happy with the plants. So if someone does a good job, I think they deserve recognition and you did a good job plants for all seasons i will be coming again anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this housemate houseplant haul try saying that five times quick i think that it was hopefully a bit interesting for you guys to see some things that people other than me would choose and i would love to know do your housemates, if you have any like plants, let me know in the comments down below. At the moment, I post long form content on Friday, so please do hit that button, subscribe to be notified when I next make a video. I post every day on TikTok and sometimes also on Instagram as well. There's all kinds of funky business on there, so please do check that out. And if you fancy buying some illustrated houseplant art prints or products, then please do head on over to my website. It's buildyourjungle.com. And I hope you're having a great day thinking about houseplants.